Good morning. We have a user on the forum that has an old ISO. And the old ISO, I keep them apart here of XL. And I can't launch any terminal, but he has also open box on XL. So I guess he did an ATT or something like that and installed something extra. So we start off with Agnix XL version 23.11.03. We're gonna do a easy installation because otherwise you don't see any issues or if there is an issue, we can't solve it. But if we go for the easy installation, we don't go to the internet and if there are Pacman issues, and there will be probably, right? Because Pacman has around Excel around 1,300 packages. And if one of them that needs an update has a conflict, then it's not Calamaris that crashes, it's Pacman that crashes, right? And then Pacman, um, Calamaris will say, hey, Pacman crashed, right? So the easy installation is always okay. It's a one bit going to your machine, another byte going to your machine, and nothing gets updated. Everything is not, well, it's not conflicting. It's, it's just moving from A to B. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is make this a useful update video rather than, well, we're gonna investigate the terminal. But for me, the return on investment is, hey, look at this old Arclix welcome app for one, right? And then we're going to go for the easy installation offline. There is no system D at this point in time in our life. And we have version 3.3.0 at that point. So it's going back in time, basically. It's time travel. So Belgian it is, erase disk. This will always work, right? This is on the beach. This is in the mountains. This is where there is no internet. This will always install. And then we'll make an update video about it and tell you once again, like 150 videos about updating, but it's knowledge. How to maintain your computer system, how to maintain your phone, how to maintain your iPad. I mean, it's all about updates, maintenance, security, stability, safety. I mean, yeah. So we'll do that and then investigate the combination of XFC open box and why he can't launch terminals. I will figure it out in the video. All right, let's pause. It's almost time to get to work. And reboot. There we go. As promised, easy installation will always install. It's just getting things from A to B. No complexity, no parameters that we have zero control over that can hold the installation. Voila, off we go. So we got ourselves a travel back in time. We are now last year, about four months ago. Okay. And then we update. So it's an update for you. And then we'll go to open box first be up to date things to remember well is all of them so you type alias there are many aliases and there are also references to scripts so the badger c is your thing you need to read and yes we'll update right this is something you have should have a look at we're exporting kind of things here and so on. I mean, 400 lines. That's something that other distros probably have, but less, right? Much less. Arch has two lines. <laughs> okay. So in those aliases, you'll find that there is, yeah, you see I'm a tiling minimum manager guy. Hop, hop. <laughs> so <clears throat> updating. Well, it's like going to the to the hairdresser and say, I want to have a haircut. And you take an image before, backup, scalp, right? I have an image before the update. I'll do my update for the haircut. And then later on, I'll do another backup scalp. 
one of the things that we have is quantum and quantum is, is, is great in the sense that you can sort of make the look of any Linux system a little bit uniform that the GTK and the Qt applications have the similar look and Arc theme is helping us there as well and so on right but this is something that other people create the package build and the dependencies and at some point in time quantum qt5 and qt6 could live next to each other and then suddenly they said well let's make them conflict right and then everything goes berserk because then pacman says that one needs to go because of that conflict etc and calamar stops right so these things happen do we want to replace this by that so let's say yes let's see what happens and here do we want to replace this with that okay and that's something from arch that's also something from arch have a look at the arch linux news on the dot org website and then we got this right these guys are in conflict things that are in conflict the easiest way the simplest way without knowing anything is remove the conflict pseudo pacman minus remove quantum and quantum anything else let's see quantum no that's it right so let's remove this one and if we remove and we update again and we remember remember of course hey we've removed it oh <laughs> yeah 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 let's do that again <coughs> update so enter enter is better than numbers and then we got this one we have a lot of people asking questions about that one right PAMEC is out right PAMEC will not be installed anymore by default on our ISOs and yes I know it's really actually a Pac-Man problem not a PAMEC problem but you decide if you want to have PAMEC or Octopi in the future and install it with pacman minus s right in this case i want to remove anything so an s concerning pamic and if i do this then we get two of them cli and pamic gtk and i guess that's it ah there you are <laughs> we still had in this area uh, era and still an Arnix PAMAC, all we've given up of that, right? Now it was PAMAC AOR. So look at that, right? Lots of things need to go. Some of the things are a bit much, like App Armor, why does it need to go? Because of the package builds, because of the dependencies that other people put in there. Okay. Anyway, it's gone. So remember, we don't have PAMAC anymore. The little red guy down here is gone. But we do not use that application anymore. We use PAMIC AOR if we want it. So again, yes, enter. Wow, 1.8, boom. But this is how you solve things, right? Gradually, one by one, getting rid of conflicts and problems. And these separate videos are online. That's how we work. If there is an issue, sometimes it's just post, it's just that. Uh, if it's just a few lines, or one line but most of the time we'll have to make videos because questions come up and another question another question and then okay let's make a video about it and then we send you to YouTube that's where we host the videos this is not anybody of Arculex it says at the end archlinux.org you say yes enter somebody's key Leonidas, another key from somebody at Archinex. You will import it. And if there is a problem with keys, the drill is very simple. What we're missing now is the Arch Linux key ring that's up to date, right? It's not up to date now. So it tries to find the key from the key server. And if that works, great for you, but often it doesn't work. And then you do sudo pacman minus s arch linux keyring. And there we go, right? Doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. sudo pacman sudo pacman minus s arch linux keyring. That's the most important thing to remember in this video. 
Problems with keys, pseudo Pacma minus S, Arch Linux keyring. We're jumping from November to 2024, March, mid-March, right? So a lot of people went out, a lot of people went in, and that's basically what is happening. Disabling keys, appending keys, and then you can update again. Yeah. Every system has its quirks, and this is one of Arch Linux keys. <clears throat> it's interesting to remind you again that we have something called fixed keys because it's so important we have actually a lot of aliases for it for one and the same thing so if you type fixed key or fixed keys or fixed keys with a z or fix with a dash it's all the same thing right it all points to one and the same thing it's that important that we have made variants of the word fixed key it all points to one and the same script and it really does tabla rasa if you know a little bit of latin clean slate everything out and then get back uh, set everything back up because pacman yeah is super important is our package manager that's the name pacman um but yeah without its keys you won't have anything so fixed key remember that now remember that we did a backup scale right so in here is the content of the etc scale etc scale is a file on any linux distribution system that if you create a new account like in color mars this guy then the content of this will be copy pasted to the new user so you have a child who wants to play a game on your computer and you say i'll make a separate account for you he logs in or he creates an account and when he logs in this will move to home eric john uh, sorry home john all right he will create a separate um he'll get a separate account and the config will be in there so the home here will just be next to me john but the content is there there will be a badge or c there will be a dot config and all the configurations will be there and that's the scale so that only happens that only the copy paste to the home directory only happens if you create a new login a new user but not during so we update things in here so that our next ISO will be including, for example, the how old alias that we now have, but it's not on your home directory. We don't, general rule, we don't write to your home directory. So it's up to you to decide, do I want to have the latest patch or C, right? Maybe it's already there, let's have a look. Aha. Uh -huh. Control find how old, right? So we update and this update is just a, a day ago and we are in an ISO of November last year. So the update comes in and it's in ETC scan, nowhere else. While it's now up to date, there is one folder here before the haircut, backup scan after the haircut and general rule after such a big installation is reboot and then we need to get to the task at hand after a little bit of analysis so basically this a little bit of what is a new eh? since november what did we change quite a bit i suppose and now we go to open box now now man i am thinking no okay all good i was thinking that we changed something for plasma to be viewable 
in VirtualBox in a setting in VirtualBox. But there we are. It's okay. So we got ourselves an up-to-date Appleix. This is Ctrl Alt T. Remember that Alacrity one. It's not from us. Two, there was an update, right? And it says what you need to do. So basically, you say, please migrate to and type. Okay, we type that. Of course, this is solved by now. We don't see this anymore. But basically, that's what we did. And then we packaged it, and it's already on your etc scale. Solved. Now, to analyze what happens, so these two guys, if you have Excel, then it's no problem. Then this will work because behind this button, it says compare, which means M-E-L-D, melt. So if you go for F12, sudo pacman minus S melt, if it's not installed, install it. Because we deliver you many minimal systems, which means you don't have melt, right? So that means that you have a nice, beautiful icon and nice text, but it will never work without the application. Same with here, git ahead, git find. So, yeah. So compare, and then you go for settings first. Do you want to see the same files? No. Huh? You want to know what's new. And one of the things that we do is, well, try to keep you rolling basically because there's no need to do reinstalls. But then again, we are new at Linux and we break Linux. And it has been for me as well. And you learn from each mistake, you learn. You say, oh, better not do that again, right? So a clean install will be necessary the first years, but gradually you get to know the yeah, intricacies in the, the, the difficulties, the, 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 right, the way how to maintain an open, an open source uh, Linux system. And this is promoted by the folder in the dot bin, stay rolling. So there are sometimes things that we do that will change your system. And if you do a clean install from the ISO, it will be implied, it will be applied and implied and then changed or whatever, right? or removed. And this is the script that actually uh, keeps you the same as the ISO development. So if you do a clean install or run a script, probably eh? that's the point one, we want to keep it the same. So often there is nothing to do, now we just say nothing to do, that's fine, nothing to run. But here at some point in time, there was a change in the make in its cpio.sh. So before the haircut to the left, after the haircut. So the things that we did, and as you see, the tommel, alacrity tommel. So YML is no in, not in anymore. We need to move to the tommel version. It's just a uh, docx and, and an xls right something a change in extension yes of course it's more but it's eh? basically it it's alacrity is still alacrity we're gonna start variety but i think a few seconds later delay 10 and 20 so it used to be 20 it's now 10 a little bit faster than we've moved to conky um, version the app there's the conky itself which just displays information on the screen. And we moved, we really moved from the application of, uh, let's say version one to version 10, something like that, right? Really jumped. And we had to get rid of things that didn't work anymore. So by conkeys, cyclo conkeys, and harvo conkeys. There, there are conkeys enough. <coughs> so these two guys and these guys have changed a little bit just a space or something, a little bit more vertical offsets, a little bit more down, I think it went. Text that was overlapping. So you have a look, what did change? And it's up to you to decide if you wanna handpick things, that you say I wanna have this or I wanna have that. There's a new config fish, but let's stick to the bash here. And the ZSH maybe. 
So switch between LightDM and SDM. It says switch between Display Manager or Boot System, Arc Linux 2 Boot and Arc Linux 2 Crop. We've changed this here. And we've changed the how old, well added the how old. And down here, the make package, n make package, n loader. To get the information quickly to the most critical files. These are the most critical files that everybody should know on Linux, right? We often just teach for Linux, not Arch Linux, not Arch Linux, Linux. These files are important anywhere. And here's some information about kernels. If we want to know what kernel do we have, give me a list of the kernels installed or am I on grub or am I on system do boot? Because at some point in time, we gave you the choice in the installation. Do you want grub? Do you want systemd boot? And then of course you have to make an alias to remember what did I choose this time, right? Boot. Now all of these things, high fetch is a new one. All of these things are not used, not yet. They are in the etc scale. A keyboard shortcut, what did we add? Ah yeah. So Praga is a the audio application. Used to be there for six years. At some point in time I looked at all the audio applications, made some criteria, and then decided upon uh, using Lollipop rather than or Praga. And evolution is a mail client, which probably nobody is using. Everybody's going to browsers and check their mails that way. So a mail client. And here we've given also Lollipop the priority in F9. And that's it. So all the information that we've changed, anything that we have changed is updated. And it's all visible. You can always check, check, check again. Here is fish, same things, display manager boot down here. How old up there? Here's some references. So all of the aliases are everywhere in all the shells we have. Okay, that's about it. But do you want it? Well, there are two ways. Either you just say, I'm gonna take that one and I'm gonna take that one i'm gonna take that one or more in detail i'm gonna take that one etc etc but we're not keen on doing um, well the thing is for years in videos you can see that we do this Control a Control c eric Control v right for years and then we got tired and i said okay no isn't there a scale for that? And that's our little name, four letters that basically point to a script. A script can supply you some more information, can supply you a link. You check out the link because scale is something that other distros probably won't have at all. And you read what scale is. Many people who are venturing their way into tiling window managers get stuck because they have a space or a comma or a semicolon in the wrong place and it doesn't start anymore. The correct code is in etc scale, right? So at that point, it's a blessing. <laughs> but we've perfected our scale so much that you have backups. You can always get your code back can we copy paste the content from etc scale to your home directory? If you say no, nothing will happen, right? If you say yes, the basically the exercise is control A, control C, Eric, control V. But why do that manual labor if you just make a script? So we say here, yes. And you see things change a little bit and we have here the backup. So this is now a backup, remember file filter, same, don't wanna see the same things. And here is all the stuff, right? It will not remove, as you see, these guys, they're still there, they will not work. 
the let's see concise no these guys will work that's okay the concise is gonna work but the left is the actual dot config the other one is a backup of 2024 03 2003 in the morning but nothing is lost so if you have something in here they say i've designed a beautiful polybar right it's here it's here but it can only overwrite the files that we have in each syscal so if you rename things give it your own personal name it will never be overwritten ever how can i know your name right we don't clean it up we don't delete anything in the dot config we just override what's in the etc scale and put it in your dot config but we also override your bash rc which is good which means if i execute my bash and i ask how old it's actually gonna work <laughs> virtual box is from 2006 so to speak right so there you go all the information you have this is the end of the update video there's one thing more maybe but i know nothing will happen uh, who knows right up all uh -huh, there we go <laughs> so up all is actually paru paru minus s y u no confirm paru has a problem we can fix the problem there are three versions of paru is that important and yay is also that important that we have three versions of yay and three versions of paru those are the aor helpers if you want to know what an aor helper is arch wiki aor helper you'll get the first hit on anything search engine like first hit is probably going to be the correct one and you have a lot of choice but if we can't install 10 of them right two is already enough in the sense if one fails we go to the other one so paru is a problem no problem if it's a problem we go to remove paru for example ah now we know which one is the problem it's been fine then we say let's get something else in one that is working and that is the general rule in linux if it doesn't work remove it and choose something else simple as that and then you say a ball ah yeah at that point in time zero linux still existed so zero linux is a user that came to our Arc linux university had an idea and said i'm gonna create a plasma iso and we helped him create it and it was based on latte doc the latte doc right ceased to exist not working on wayland probably uh, if it's not if nobody's gonna eh, continue the project then latte doc will just die silently and he decided at some point in time i'm gonna stop maintaining my distro my iso xero linux middle list is gone so sudo pacman minus r xero linux it is not a message to the iso builders or the wannabe iso builders right it's not the building the iso that is the worst or the most work it's maintaining it is solving issues it's helping people that's what takes a lot of energy and a lot of um, yeah so think before releasing anything this or like okay so removing general links middle list that's all we need to do all right now everything is okay so a scale is a great way to move everything from a to b or it's a control a control c control v thing and as simple as that or just handpick the files that you want so we're up and running here the update video stops right and then we go to the control 8 control alt e is normally what i press but we maybe it's better to go from the terminal so we see some text we're supporting already quite a few i should count them again 15 16 
Arsenic's based system, so this can be used anywhere. We're creating something that is usable on anything arch related, of course. And um, I want to install Openbox, right? And see why this user has problems with the terminal. So we do install. This is actually one of the first things we did in Arch Merge. Openbox has been installed six years ago. We had an ISO that contained XFCE, Openbox, and i3. Meaning XFCE is the easy way to come in. Openbox is something between a desktop and a tiling window manager. And then we went to tiling manager, to i3, as a way to learn. Gradually make it more difficult, right? So this is your Openbox. It is installed on Control T, so that's the problem he's facing. Control T, super enter, super shift enter. None of the things are working. So a combo kind of thing. Now it all depends what. Ah, there we go. Everything is coming. <laughs> Just slow, I guess. Super shift escape. Always keep track of things that are in the memory and launched without you knowing, basically. Oh my God, I remember this. It's easier up here. <laughs> so close and I'll, I'll press a few buttons here to launch things and nope, thank you, bye. And so yes, yes, and yes, yes, the terminals are running. It's just sluggish, slow. Yep, yep, and yep. Okay, a lot of things I had pressed. So keep track of things that are in the system. This won't work, right? We're on open box, but what we did is super form. On the numeric keypad, well, basically it's the arrows that you may or may not have on your keys. So this is number eight, nine, four, three, two, one, four, seven, eight, five, one four right so use them an open box to put, put some, something a eh? tile basically so <clears throat> what could be the problem with a control T that is not launching it is slow I've pressed the button it takes a while that's for sure so what is strange about that Let's see, if I launch it from here, it's immediately. He was talking about Termite, do we still have that? Okay, no. So Termite is, is ended, right? Um, yes, it's the, the data is still online, and yes, I actually keep still a package on the repo, so you can install it. But basically, we moved away from it, right? Because there will be no future development on it, just maintenance. Mm, if at all maintenance, right? It's not our project. What I would check, what I would say for any system out there, is a super D, super shift D, sublime text. Boot up sublime text. Then super shift enter. Learn where the configuration of your tiling window manager or your system is. In this case, it's open box. Forget about folders, uh, files. Put your folder in there and start reading everything. This is how you learn how any desktop is actually working. And in here, these are the, the files that will launch it. So a la gritty. Windows return, super return, is gonna launch it. So to the user on the forum, I say, look at this. This needs to be launched. This needs to be correct. There can't be any mistake. And it's, it's as simple as this, right? It is as simple as that. 
and everything falls apart. That's why in ETC Scale, a copy is not that bad, right? The correct code is in ETC Scale. If you messed with that code, the key bindings won't work. Ah, obviously. The menu is something that Openbox make, uh, make specific for Openbox. Let's go to number two. This thing, sorry, this thing is the menu. So if you want to define something, that's this, sorry, that's this, this is the menu. But the menu is actually created with an application, OB menu generator. So user bin OB menu generator creates the menu or you can make it yourself. And then it's this one, right? Environments are some variables which have nothing to do with terminals. Out to start, I don't like everything in white. It's going to launch Pykem. May I give a tip? Recently, just recently, I said the look on ChatWM is actually quite nice if I just say, I'll just figure it out on my own. Meaning I leave every comfy up to Pykem and see how it looks and feels because the timer, how it fades away and transparency and all that is the default from Pykem, not from us. Have a look, right? Just a tip. Wallpapers, the menu at the top, escape, so this one, when I press super key, this one, escape, super key to the left, we get the menu. Numlocks is on, so numeric locks. If I, I should actually, well, should. E, it implies to be on if I type this. So on, all kit GNOME, if for this guy, anything that's get launched, we need to know what's the password, that's that. Authentication, who can run what application. And they should check the, the root password. Notification daemon is here, the volume icon is here, XFC power is here, Clipman is here, and an applet is here, this little guy. And you can add more things. But terminal wise, terminal wise, I see nothing, right? We used to have this as set. Maybe you have added this. And then of course the key bindings of XFC are in here as well. Now we're just using the key bindings of Openbox, which is this one, RCXML. So if you start mixing, then you have to set the XFC settings the same as Openbox because you're gonna mix things. You're gonna use the settings daemon of XFC. That might be a reason. And all the rest seems quite okay and has nothing to do with key bindings for terminals. If you go deeper, then we have the pike and toggle on and off. That's no, not gonna cause any issues. And the launcher is the super D. So that's working as well. Thank you, Aditya. And um, yeah, I don't know, that's it. I mean, I wouldn't know why anything else is not working. It is slow. So it is a virtual machine should check on a real metal thing but one second later now it's faster so maybe it was doing some things in, in the boot department still doing whatever he wants to do I don't know we are getting rid of your XVT slowly and gradually we're putting it out because look at this <laughs> he thinks there's a big screen so ah, bye bye your XVT welcome Alacriti ah, kill so Alacrity is here as the default one. Sometimes we have Kitty when we're on Wayland, for example. But um, I can't think of anything else why terminals would be reacting differently. Super, enter. It's slow-ish, but it's it gets there. So super Q, super shift Q, no. That will be my assessment of the terminals. And in the meantime, we've done some updating and 
taught you some important aliases. So that may be a uh, last thing to say. Guys, read anything that's in those aliases. See how easy it can be even to download something from the internet, YouTube downloader, stuff like that. Um, many, many things are in here. Which VGA do we have? Things that I've used once and then never again. But you think there are things in here that we use all the time as well. So RIP is something we kind of use quite often. What the, did I install last? Well, last thing I did was Termite. That's true. I've installed it in this video. And then you know, why is it not working? Ah, because we got an update of Perl. So I have to check my files for Perl or, 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 right? It's all up here. What changed to my system? Those are the updates that came in. All right, enjoy our colleagues, enjoy the learning. Cheers.